Hi, I'm David Fitzgerald, Chartered Physiotherapist, specialising in spinal rehabilitation for the last 30 years. Today I wanted to share with you two quick tips uh, for two types of sciatica and to show you some corrective exercises that are worth trying uh, if you're in this situation. One is if you're stuck in a S hook shape position. So if your body is shifted in one direction and your hips have shifted to the other, this is known as a shift for obvious reasons. And in general, what's happening here is your body is trying to drift into a position to get pressure off the area where the disc is bulging. So if you are leaning or shifting towards the left side, it's usually because the bulge is pushing out towards the right side and usually people will have right-sided sciatica in that situation. So uh, you may be just stuck, shifted to one side, or you may be stuck in a bent position and shifted to one side. Uh, and I'll deal with that in a, in a second. Now remember, on a previous video, we gave you some warning signs, some indications of what we call red flags. And if you have those signs, then really uh, doing self-treatment is not a good idea. It's a, it's a dangerous thing to do. But uh, if you're familiar with those, what those features are, um, then, then it's appropriate to do these things. So if you're in that shifted position, the first priority is to see, can you correct the shift? Can you change the shift position? So let's say you're stuck with your shoulders pushing towards the left side and your hips have gone out towards the right. One thing to try to do in a standing position is to lean with your left shoulder against the wall and see can you gradually let your hips drift in towards the wall and what you're trying to do there obviously is help to try to realign yourself it's called a, a shift correction now very important that you do this that it mustn't increase pressure on the sciatic nerve in the leg so if you get an increase in your leg pain you know that this is a, not a safe corrective thing to try to do um, but uh, sometimes you can modify it by bringing your feet a bit closer to the wall so it makes it a little bit easier to do uh, and you can do it without causing the leg pain in which case it's a helpful thing as to do as a first aid maneuver sometimes just weight bearing is putting to puts too much pressure on the disc so uh, the compression through a vulnerable irritated disc is too much so you can work on shift correction lying on your tummy so it's the same principle where you try to move your hips and your and your torso to get into the same line but if you do it lying down then there's no compression going through the spine so that can be a, 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 a useful first aid measure to try to correct the shift if we're doing this in a clinic clinical situation we will often try and facilitate this with with gentle manual therapy or mobilizing treatment techniques or things to try and reduce muscle spasm uh, which can pull you into those positions so they're the kind of treatment techniques to try to help with a shift correction but if you are in the shifted position priority number one is to try to change the shift without getting sciatic nerve compression. The other kind of sciatic uh, deformity that you see are people are stuck in a bent position and uh, any attempts to move from that cause increased pain. So in that situation, sometimes we can work uh, to gradually bring people up into a straighter position when they're lying on their tummy. So the movement is called spinal extension, but they're trying to go into an arched position uh, it, as slowly as they can tolerate that might mean just lying on a tummy it might mean lying on a couple of pillows uh, uh, or then if you can progress to lying on your elbows like reading a book sometimes called a sphinx position uh, and then the progression on that is to try to push to straighten the arm so you're bringing yourself into a more extended position so there that's another useful first aid technique again the golden rule here is that it may cause discomfort in your spine, but mustn't cause any nerve root pressure uh, or symptoms radiating down the leg. So again, in, in clinic, if we see patients with this situation, we will often try to, to use uh, graded manual therapy, not thrusting maneuvers, but graded mobilizations to try uh, to restore that movement. 
uh, and things to try and ease muscle spasm and sometimes without uh, try and use corrective tape to try and just support the system and hold it in a more upright position. But there are two basic principles uh, uh, when we have a, a disc irritation uh, where we're trying to commence treatment to, to start to, to get some more normal function back in the area. And of course the clinical decision is when is it appropriate to do these things. If somebody is in such acute severe pain that they can't move and can't sit then it's not really appropriate to try to do these things. So it usually is within a, a day or two uh, of that more se severe kind of presentation or if it's more of a niggly situation and people are still able to go about their business but in a slow controlled way or have to be careful with fast movements then usually we can commence these types of interventions uh, in a treatment session where, where we see people. So some useful tips for you there I hope if that happens to fit the pattern of sciatica that you have. Uh, if you have any questions please, please feel free to enter them in the comments below. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please subscribe and then you can get the weekly videos on health tips and uh, information that we put out every week uh, on the channel. Please give us a thumbs up. I'll see you again on another video. Bye for now.